Hello and welcome to another edition of the Desert Mountain Podcast. My name is Michael Craven, joined today by Kim Atkinson. Hello, Kim. Hello, Michael. I've got a lot of energy in me today. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, we have Arnaldo to thank for our Lavazza coffee. We do have coffee on the table today. That might be the reason. I'm a little... Woo! Okay. Yeah. Well, um, this but- is... It, for good reason. There's a lot to talk about today. There is a lot to talk about. Um, thank you for your amazing enthusiasm and energy. Well, and it's also Groundhog Day. It is Groundhog Day. Which doesn't quite mean the same thing in Scottsdale as it does back east, because look at the weather outside. I know it. Now, did did the groundhog see his shadow? Do you know? I heard that we're going to have six more weeks of winter, Okay, but we're okay with that here. That's fine. That's fine. And we'll get, and we'll get a little bit more into Groundhog Day at the end of the podcast. That's right. For now... Let's start with kind of like our, our theme of the week. We're, we're celebrating our croquet, our golf croquet community this week. We are. So we we're going to talk a little bit about that. That's right. Golf croquet week. This is a fantastic week to be out on the lawn, learning how to play croquet, mastering the game of croquet. There is, uh, we are incredibly fortunate this week to have uh, Cheryl Bromley out mm-hmm. out here. And if anyone in the golf croquet community would probably know who she is, she's one of the best players in the world. Yep. Uh, so we're very fortunate to have her. And you spent some time with her out yes. on the lawn. Yes, I am hooked on golf croquet. I kind of am too. It's so fun. And Cheryl was such a delight. Um, she taught us a little bit about the game she and did. about herself and why she enjoys coming to Desert Mountain. Uh, I mean, what a great opportunity for all of us. The thing I love about her, too, is she's been doing it a long time. One of the mm-hmm. things she talks about is how she started young mm-hmm. and because she wanted to be good for as long as she could have. And so she talks about how it's a game for everyone. That's right. Whether you're 14 or 80 or 50 or however old you are, it's an amazing game. It's a game for all. And we also had some staff out there yesterday Yes, from Sonoran, and yes. they were crushing it. That's right. Before we get to Golf Croquet Week, though, I do want to make note that we're going to try something a little bit different today. Yes, we are. And have, since we are talking a lot about the Cochise Restoration Project, we've had a few meetings happening all week long, uh, one yesterday, one, uh, two yesterday, two tomorrow. And so we're going to share a little bit of insights from those meetings and do like a little bonus feature uh, talking yep. about restoring Cochise. So stay tuned for that. We've been all over the mountain this week. It's We've been, been at busy. the Cochise meetings up at CG. We've been out on the golf croquet lawn. What else can we do? I mean, come on. Well, I think that explains why we have the Lavazza <laughs> coffee this morning <laughs> exactly right. to keep us going because it's only Thursday. That's right. So, okay. Uh, well, let's go out to the croquet lawn. Well, hello, members. We are out here on the croquet lawn at the Sonoran Clubhouse. Very special week. We have Cheryl Bromley with us today, and Cheryl is a very esteemed professional in the game of golf croquet. Among many other things, we're going to learn much more about her, but today she's here with us uh, as a resident professional. She's a guest, guest golf croquet professional on the mountain this week and working mm-hmm. with our members. Cheryl, welcome. Thank you so much. It's, it's really a pleasure to be here, and I think this is about maybe my fourth time here. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been working closely with Haven um, uh, each time I come, and, and every time I come back, um, there's more and more programming that's happening, more and more players. It's really exciting. That is yeah. exactly what we want to hear, yeah. exactly what we want to see. So mm-hmm. um, so how has that grown? I mean, you're seeing kind of a progression um, and more interest. Um, you guys, come on out here a little bit and say yeah. hello. And, come and Matthew, on down. Matthew um, too, is, is, um, has gotten into the croquet scene. Yeah. Uh, I met him for the first time uh, back in November, and mm-hmm. and I understand he's hooked. Yep, so. starting an addiction for sure. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. The mountain mallets have been around on the mountain for a while, and having an established court for them, um, and you coming out, um, growing the program with Haven and Matthew and others now joining the team. Um, I kind of wonder, what do members not know about golf croquet? Like, mm. we have golf courses. Yes. We mm-hmm. have a huge tennis program. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of fun to be had out here. Absolutely. So what are they missing that they could maybe learn out here on the croquet oh, court and yeah. grow this program even more? Because I know that's what these guys are ready to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what's really neat is um, that 
the sport, um, it, it's, it runs the gamut from it can be like very social uh, up to very competitive. Um, the other thing that's really neat is that it, um, it goes hand in hand with other sports. So, for example, my background, I've um, taught tennis for 46 years. Oh, wow. So I've just retired from teaching tennis, um, but I've been playing croquet for 15. So I noticed at a point where my tennis game was starting to drop off a little bit, I discovered croquet, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I've got another sport I can do. Uh, you know, and even with golfers, um, you know, golfers make great croquet players because they're really good at lining up shots mm. and things. So it's a nice transitional sport. Um, also, um, <clears throat> it doesn't take up a lot of time. So you can come out and have a game in, you know, 45 minutes and then go and work out and, and be on with your, you know, get on with your day. So um, it complements the other activities because there's so much to do here, mm -hmm. you know. So um, so that's kind of neat. It's not, it doesn't take up your entire day. It's a flexible activity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so if I were to call some friends and say, let's go, let's go down to the croquet court, mm -hmm. what's that group? How many should I call? Like, how many do oh, I need right. to have like a fun day out? Right. So you can, I mean, um, you just start start by yourself, for example. Yeah. You can have a great time coming out and just practicing, mm -hmm. which you can do very easily on your own. And then secondly, you can invite just one friend and maybe have a singles game. Um, and in croquet, you would each play two of the balls. Um, so there's a, um, if you see on the center post out here, there's blue, red, black, and yellow. Um, so blue and black are teammates, red and yellow are teammates. So you could have you know, you and a friend play two balls. Um, you can even do it if you have three friends. Um, you know, one person could play one ball, and uh, or two balls rather, and each other one plays up one ball. Okay. Um, four is ideal for a doubles game, two against two. Um, and what's neat on the courts here is that you could, you could have easily up to 16, if you wanted to have a party out here, Kim, you could have 16 people playing. You could have four start here, and then four would start in the other corner, and four more there, and four more over there. And I know, um, Haven, you guys do this like with wine and wickets and mixers and things, which is a really neat um, social aspect of the game, too. Um, people have somewhere they can show up, they don't need a partner, you know, and, um, and they'll get them going right into it. That's so yeah. fun. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of different activities. Yeah. All right. So in terms of the tennis, so you t touched on that yeah. um, and you found the sport. Mm -hmm. You've done a lot of different things with this sport. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, tr coming here to Desert Mountain, this is your fourth visit. What are mm -hmm. some other things you've been able to do with your, with your craft? Oh, right. So... Um, what uh, with the croquet, the United States Croquet Association. Okay. Um, since 2014, I've been the national chair of the Golf Croquet Committee. Um, so we do a lot of work on, uh, you know, when there are new rules that come out, um, we set up educational pieces to teach people the new rules. Um, and we've done things with um, certifying referees, uh, uh, working with instructors, um, lots of training. So I do I do a lot of refereeing. I run a lot of tournaments. Mm. Um, I play in a lot of tournaments. Um, so get to see a yeah. lot of places, a lot of yeah. visiting. Get to travel all around. That's yeah. awesome. It's really neat. It's yeah. not an Olympic sport. Oh, uh, you know, it was back in the early days, like okay. in the nineteen tens. I think they had okay. it. Okay, um, but. Uh, it, it really, golf croquet in particular, uh, can be, uh, it's really fun to watch on TV cool. or on YouTube, for example. Um, so we kind of are foreseeing that that might come back around. Oh. Um, I guess the, the one um, stumbling block is that in order to be in the Olympics, they have to, all the countries sort of have to have representation. Mm. And there are some countries that still um, don't have croquet. Gotcha. Yeah. That would be a requirement, I would yeah. think. Mm -hmm. All right. And so you've come up the ranks in your mm -hmm. uh, years of, of competing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. national rankings. Mm -hmm. And I think I read that you um, you can play this sport, you know, versus a 14-year-old boy or oh, yeah. uh, oh, 80-year-old yeah. man. Absolutely. It doesn't yeah. matter mm -hmm. your age or mm -hmm. your gender. Right. Um, and yeah. so at your peak, mm -hmm. you, you were up there. Still am. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, so what's exciting is that, um, I mean, I haven't even reached my peak yet. Yeah. So uh, 
when I first got started playing tournaments, um, that was like back in 2009, and there were there were very few players, you know, in the U.S. competing in golf croquet. Um, now there's lots of people, but I've been able to um, stay in the game, stay at a high place in the game, um, and I have the opportunity. Um, I should find out in a couple of weeks. Um, to be selected to go to England for the Women's World Championships. Woo! So they're sending two women, so I get to, I should, should be one of those. Should selected. be one of those. Well, we will keep posted yeah. on that. And that, that will be filmed and uh, be on YouTube as well. So awesome. Watch. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We'll be following for sure. Yeah. I know the Mountain Mallets and others here at the Mountain, the, the members are learning more about golf croquet this week. Mm-hmm. Cheryl, this okay. has been so much fun being uh, kind of a rookie out here <laughs> learning the ropes. And Haven Matthew, thank you so much for bringing all these wonderful activities to our members. It's, it's an awesome, awesome event. Uh, and you're here all week doing clinics, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah, and we're going to have a little tournament towards the end of the week. So, and people can just come and watch too. That would be uh, fun. You know, Thursday and Friday. So grab a glass of wine, yeah, come absolutely. hang out. Absolutely. All right. Well, anything else you would like to share with our members? Final hmm. thoughts. When are we going to see you next time? Uh, let's see. Probably late fall next year again, or the, yeah, late fall of this year probably. Okay. So, yeah. Good kind of come maybe twice a year now. Well, that's wonderful. And so if you haven't, don't get the chance to be out this week, you can make it around next time. Mm -hmm. But Cheryl, that was so much fun. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for showing us around. Nice to meet you too. And we'll take it back to the studio. All right, Kima, I think you're ready to, I don't know, I'm not going to say go pro, but maybe, you know, get out there and start honing your skills and you know what? When Cheryl said that she had a tennis background yeah. and was teaching tennis for her career, yeah. um, I grew up playing tennis, yep. so I I, I kind of appreciate a little bit of the the hand eye coordination that comes with that. And and she also mentioned about golfers and maybe what they're missing when um, if they're if they're not playing golf croquet, they should because they'd be good at it. The competitive spirit uh, definitely comes out when you get out there and you're playing against, you know, others and you can knock their ball far away from the wicket. And I kind of go, ooh, you know, spicy, spicy. (laughs) Maybe I don't just put it through. Maybe I knock theirs out. Uh, So, yeah, awesome. Super cool to have her here. I don't think we can understate uh, how cool it is to have her here on on the property. So agree. And to have that facility for our members to enjoy and it's there for any time, one player or a dozen players, however you want to, however you want to hit it. And I think we'll have a Friday jam tomorrow that will be dedicated to golf croquet. Very nice. Yes. All right. So as promised um, with the restoration of Cochise, golf course being such a big topic around the mountain. Um, Real quick history, um, the member meetings really started to take place in November. So what we did is we worked with our golf course architect, Chad Getz, um, Todd Bone, John Lieberger, Damon, Chris Storbeck, and um, our golf and agronomy committees put together the um, kind of initial plans Mm -hmm. and thoughts on what this restoration could look like. Yep. And, and those meetings happened in November. Um, Chad Getz came back to uh, Arizona, came back to the club just a couple of weeks ago yep. to review them again with uh, some specific groups, um, golf groups, men, women, all groups, yep. and uh, made some changes. Yeah, a lot of feedback. A lot of feedback. So based on that feedback, um, we thank our members for listening and went ahead and now is the presentation. So um, let's check in and, and talk to Todd Bone, get some insights from him. He, he's the one leading uh, the charge with this, with our architects and others. So. Yeah, I think you, you had a chance to catch up with him right before he was heading into one of those talks. Yes. And uh, yeah, let's, let's catch up with Todd. Okay, so we're doing a little mini segment within the Desert Mountain Podcast. I have Todd Bone with me. He's been very busy today. You're busy kind of every day. Kind of. Kind of busy. Yeah, t- tis the season. Long, long days, um, but today has been amazing. Wednesday, uh, you're seeing this members on Thursday's Mountain Minute, but uh, we've held a couple of really great coffee talk sections with our members and did some presentations right here in the Sunset Terrace. You're getting ready to go in again. 
What were some of the good questions that kind of emerged out of uh, the time that we spent huddling up on the on the ninth? Yeah, we had a lot of really good feedback, a lot of really good uh, questions during these sessions. But some of the ones that stick out to me are the members asking, you know, what's the timeline of this project? What uh, when, what can we expect from a timeline aspect? And it's a 12-month project on Cochise. You know, when you touch the irrigation system, which touches every aspect, greens, tees, fairways, roughs, um, it's going to take 12 months to get this done just in the sheer volume of, of the amount of work that has to do. Even though it is a restoration, it's still going to take that long. So September 23 to September 24, if, if the vote goes through. And then the driving range, uh, we're looking at options there to see if we're going to do that or not at this time. But uh, we'll be stay tuned on some of that. If we do do it with the Cochise Golf Course, it would be timed in that, in that, in that same, same timeline to where we would uh, you know, take it down in November. we got to do a sewer line move in November, Todd Bruin and his team do. And then we would start the construction and the grassing time would start in May, uh, you know, late May, early, early June to take advantage of the monsoonal humidity storms like I've talked about so long. So that's really where we start is from the grassing days and work our way back. Um, the second question was probably about our water uh, on, on the mountain yep. and uh, what the measures we're doing to, to conserve or to waste, or to not waste water, but to, 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 to utilize water better, which I love that question because we're doing a lot of things here um, as, as a club and, and our profession does a lot of things too. But so specifically here to Desert Mountain and with retain, what it pertains to uh, Cochise is we're going to be utilizing some newer varieties of Bermuda grass, which are 30 to 40 percent more drought resistant, which therefore we put less water down. Uh, we're going to upgrade the irrigation system, um, you know, because we have what we call that block system out there now to where one station runs eight or nine heads you at a time. You showed us that actually. I did. You put them on and they were sprinkling everywhere. I, I did. We don't have to do that. Everybody gets it when they see it like that. Yeah. And uh, so we'll go to a single head irrigation control, hopefully, which will really allow us to mm -hmm. put the water where we really, really need it. And then upgrading our pump station as well is a big part of that because we have failures uh, on our pump station, but also in our piping systems too, which waste water uh, out, out, out and about as well. So yeah. um, those are a lot of the measures that we're doing um, and, and to do it, but those are, those are pretty much the two that stick out to me. I agree. And uh, one thing we, we found to be just very um, instrumental in your presentations was that we did these meetings in November. Um, Chad came back in January and based on those meetings and having all those mem member input sessions, those suggestions, many of them were applied into the plans that we're showing today. Um, so kind of suggestions and information early on and really taking that member feedback to heart and that's what they're seeing today. Yeah, I'm excited for everybody to come see see the uh, quote unquote final plans that we're looking yeah. at after all the feedback sessions we had with the golf groups, the ladies groups, the member groups. Yep now more than into this now we're showing that response back and we listened we hear you um, we took into a lot of consideration you know remove some of the bunkers leaving the trees doing things the like that stays. the trees on number one stays tree on number 18 stays you know just a sneak peek if you didn't watch the slide or if you didn't watch the show but um but anyway that's yeah we're, we're excited about that excited to show everybody well thank you for spending the time with us and for, sure. for, with our members and more to come yeah See you later. You better get in there. All right. All right, let's go. All right. Okay. Well, and then, you know, so he went in and the amazing presentation we heard from Chad. Chad had his presentation that... that he did a voiceover recording. Right. So um, from Florida. So yep. he, he, you know, left the mountain in, in January, went back to the drawing board yep. to kind of tweak some of those things oh, yeah. and then sent us an audio file over the weekend. And so that's what what members are seeing this week as part of the um, revisions whole by whole. That video is, uh, by the way, on our member website, and you can watch that anytime. It's right there on the homepage, so easy to find. But we did hear a lot uh, from Todd, live and in the flesh. Yes. And he one of the coolest things was after the meeting, when we went out to the ninth hole of yes. Coach East, yes. uh, and he was able to actually show us the organic matter uh, that goes down, what, almost a foot into the ground, and you can really see how it's built up to what it's where we're at now over right. the years. And I think he did a great job explaining how that is impacting conditions yep. and what's happening on our greens and why they need to be replaced. Right. So organic matter was kind of a cool new scientific term that a yeah. lot of our members were able to see live and in person. It's one thing when you hear about it, but when you get to see it, then you're going to go, oh, yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, we, yeah. it's more than we should have. Exactly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. We did put together a little bit of uh, Groundhog content. Oh. Some people might have already. We put, we put it on our social media channels. Okay. But for those of you not on social media, uh, you know, maybe peruse around the Mountain Minute. I think it's going to find its way in there today. So give that a give that a shout. Give it a gander. Give it a gander. And enjoy. And um, <laughs> I, that's all we can really say about yeah, that. Yeah, you know, a little silly, but just kind of a, you know, a way to drive home the, the point that uh, winter in, in Scottsdale, Arizona is a beautiful thing. You better not jinx us, Michael. Oh, boy. Come on. Oh, shoot, what have I done? <laughs> no, I think we're going to be okay. We're going to be all right. Okay, so we are ready to wrap up. But before we do that, some great shots around the mountain. Shots around the mountain. And as we has been the theme lately... A lot of good ones. Okay. So I'm just going to jump right in. Let's do it. All right. First of all, Rex Rice, Tuesday, January 10th, hole in one, number 13, Cochise. We had Gerald Hines, Wednesday, January 25th, Eagle, number 16, out at Outlaw. Nice. Angel Morris, Wednesday, January 25th, hole in one, number four, Renegade. We're getting around. Cochise, Outlaw, Renegade. Jim Cunningham with his first ever hole-in-one at Outlaw, hole number four. That was January 28th. Congratulations, yes. Mr. Cunningham. Mm-hmm. Then we had Susan Grun, Saturday, January 28th, hole-in-one at hole 12 over at seven. Woo-hoo. Seven. We had uh, Jim Andrews, Saturday, January 28th, hole-in-one, also at seven, hole number nine. A lot of a- action over there at wow. seven. We had Timothy Russell, uh, Sunday, January 29th, hole-in-one, number eight, Chiricahua. Here you go. Uh-oh. So Mr. Cunningham had his first career ace, which is amazing. This was Mr. Russell's 12th hole-in-one. So oh. at this point, you're just making us all look bad, Mr. <laughs> Russell. But congratulations. That is incredible. Well done. Uh, and then finally, last but not least, we had Ian Akiyama, Monday, January 30th, with a hole-in-one at Geronimo, hole number four. That is so fantastic. Tons of holes in one. You know what? We have one more to report. We do? It's from the staff championship. Come on. Did you hear about it? No. Hold on. I have to look this up. Okay. <laughs> okay, I found it. Okay. All right. So this is from the staff championship that's held out at Outlaw. Yep. Uh, it's an annual event. Our teammates are extremely appreciative to have this opportunity to play. And um, we've got a really cool shot of the tournament. I got this email from Peter overnight begging, <laughs> let's get some exposure for this. Absolutely. This is such a great thing. Tell us, Aaron, help us with your last name. How long have you been at Desert Mountain? So my name is Aaron Schneethors. Uh, this is my second season here at DM. I am a uh, assistant at Renegade Golf Course right now. Fantastic. So was this your first time playing in the staff championship or your second time then? This was my first time, yes. I don't believe, I think um, I'm seasonal. So last year's, I believe, was in maybe September before I got here. So this was my first staff championship. Oh, my goodness. And from what I understand and what I'm hearing about the staff championship is it's very highly regarded very much appreciated by the staff that we have the opportunity to, to play the course and be out there. And from what Peter tells us, all the members, uh, many of our members are wanting to know what happened out there. What were the results <laughs> of the tournament? So, um, so you answered the phone when we were calling to get information and you're the guy we actually wanted to talk to. Did something kind of interesting happen when you were out there playing the staff championship? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a pretty cool round. So it was a great day. Um, I, I was able to play in the afternoon when it warmed up. It was awesome. Uh, it got really nice. And actually on uh, hole 14, the short par four, uh, I was playing about 265 yards downwind. I hit a four iron, or sorry, a four wood. Uh, I had a, started on a good line, took a bounce, and uh, ended, up, ended up in the hole. So I... So unfortunately, was able to get a hole in one on a par four. Whoa! So not even just a hole in one. You albatross that bad boy. I got yep. I got an albatross. That's my that's my second hole in one ever. My my first albatross is pretty cool. Unbelievable! Congratulations, yep. Aaron. That is fantastic. Thank you. Oh my gosh, we're so excited and amazing that we again trying to f- find information on this thing. We pick up the phone, <laughs> yeah. and the guy that did does the shot picks up the phone. 
Couldn't have worked out any better. <laughs> That's pretty funny, yep. And you... Exactly, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. You deserve a huge round of applause. Yep. Um, well done. Thank you for everything that you do for our club, and thank you, members, on the staff championship. There's more to read about that in the Mountain Minute as well. Congratulations, Aaron. Well done. Thank you very much. All right. We'll see you soon. Take care, sir. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, bye. All right. Bye-bye. Wonderful day. Great podcast. Thank you for everything, uh, Michael. Thank you, Kim. Uh, keep the caffeine coming. Yeah, we need it. We're, we're getting through. Another big week next week. Yeah. A lot it's going on in Arizona right now. A lot going on. But. So the theme next week is AZ Awesome Week. Yeah. As a lot of people know, we got, you know, big golf tournament down the road. We got a Super Bowl. You know, I would be remiss not to mention the Kansas City Chiefs, our friend Patrick, our friend Andrea Randall. A lot of people from around here in the office are... There are some fans. Huge Kansas City people, so yes. shout out to them. But huge week next week, big week this week. We just appreciate you joining us to listen to what we have to say. And yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, members. We'll see you next week.